everyone, it's Julian. Today I'm back with a video you guys have actually been requesting for a while. Today we're going to be talking about how to make Basel Darwish style minimal tech house. As usual, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, presets, everything like that from this video is available at the top of the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. And yeah, let's get started. So we're at 127 BPM, and the first sound here is the kick. So you can hear this is a pretty standard sort of tech house, minimal tech house type of kick like you would use in these style of tracks. You know, the main thing is just you can see, you can really see it in the waveform. Like you can see like the transient here is super punchy. And then we have this like boom of bass at the end of the sound. So that's the type of kick you want. It's going to be super punchy in the transient, you know, big. If I play that on its own, actually, you can hear very punchy, but then it's also going to have all this bass to it. In the end there. And yeah, so you really just want to make sure that your kick has kind of a similar thing to that, where it's like big and, you know, like a fat, boomy, 909 style kick. And then it's going through some drum bus here, so here's without that. And then with it, you can hear it just fills out the kick a little bit. And that's it for the kick. You know, if you have a really good kick sample, usually you don't have to do too much. It's just about getting it to the right place in the mix volume-wise. And there we are. And then we have the bass line. Which, this type of bass line is very simple. You can see that it's really just like based around... So we're in the key of A, so you can see I have A. And then A an octave up, G, which would be the minor seventh, D, which would be the fourth, and then that's it. So it's really just kind of like using these basic musical intervals to create the sound. What it's really more about here is the groove and just kind of like creating this like powerful low end groove than it is the actual notes that you use. Like as long as your notes are in key and it's just like, you know, two or three notes, no more than that, then you're going to be good. After that, it just kind of becomes about the groove and how it fits into everything else. For the sound, this is made with operator. And you can see that, yeah, it's three sine waves here. Pretty standard sort of operator bass. But this one, where the detail really comes in, is in the pluckiness of it and sort of like the punchiness. Because you can see that we have a sine wave here from the first one where the envelope is just set pretty normal. But then on the second one, it's like this shorter envelope. And then on the third one, it's even shorter. So the idea here is that with each new oscillator that you bring in, it's kind of adding more like fatness and punch to the bass because of those envelopes. So here's just the first oscillator, just that sine wave. And with the second oscillator, you can hear it's even more punchy. And then you can hear the third one adds that little, like, on the start of the sound. Like, just a little bit more, like, impact. That's why that one's got a shorter envelope. And yeah, so when you're making the FM basses for the style, obviously we've all seen this before. It's a pretty simple bass patch to make. But it's, it's more than just like knowing how to create the deep bass. It's also about knowing how to work with the envelopes and really shape the synth so that it's not just the notes that are being played, but it's the way that those notes sound with this particular bass patch and the way that it's like so detailed in terms of the pluck. That's really what you're trying to think about here. Obviously, yeah, it's very easy to just take oscillator or operator and turn on more oscillators, but it's more about the idea behind it and how it's all kind of like being shaped in terms of volume over time. And then we just have a low pass filter on that with an envelope. Just adds that last little bit of pluckiness. And then we just have a bit of drum bus on this one. You can see it's hitting pretty hard. It's on the hard setting. So just really, really taking that bass and fattening it up. If I turn this to the medium setting, you'll see it's not the same. That's when we have it on the full hard setting. And yeah, then the last thing on there is just a compressor, which is side chaining this bass to the kick. And that's it for the bass line. And then I'll just show you the low end bus really quick. It's just a bit of saturation on these both at the same time. 
Here's without it. And then with it, you can hear it. It actually doesn't really boost the volume that much. But what it does is it just kind of fills out the space between the kick and the bass and makes it kind of fit under the same umbrella more, so to speak. Then we have our main hi-hat. So you can see, this is made taking two 909 hi-hats. We have the closed one, which as you can hear, adds the punch. And then we have the open one, and that's giving us that quick like you hear in a lot of these tracks. So, yeah, the idea is that you know, this is that main sound that you want to hear. But then when we add in the closed hi-hat. See how it just has so much more punch and it's a lot fuller? So that's what that closed hi-hat is in there for. I really recommend if you're trying to make one of these short hi-hats like you guys hear in all these tracks. Don't just take, like, don't just take, yeah, the open hi-hat. Try layering the closed one with it too. Because you can really get a lot of mileage out of literally just some of the most basic two sounds in dance music. The closed hi-hat from the 909 and the open hi-hat from the 909. And it's also like how the, this is being mixed. Well obviously, you know, it's one of the loudest things in the mix. And that's a big part of how that's going to sit in the groove. And then we have this noise hi-hat. This is meant to just create this like constant revolving kind of morphing sound. What's happening here is you can see, so we just have a bit of white noise going into a bandpass filter. And then I have an LFO here that's on the filter cutoff. And you can see it's at a weird time. It's at 1 6. So it's just kind of constantly moving that filter frequency around. I have it on the sample and hold too, so it's pretty much like a random LFO. And yeah, that's just something that I've noticed in a lot of these tracks. Just having this like constantly moving rather than just having one hi-hat that's just you know the same thing over and over you can hear it adds a really cool atmosphere to the track and makes it feel really lively and that's just going through some drum bus and a high pass filter and then finally we just have this hi-hat you can hear it just adds some shuffles and then you can see the groove of hi-hats is actually dry. So if you have really fat sounds already, like this main hi-hat just being so strong, you don't actually need to do too much. And then we have the clap. You can hear it's just a nice punchy clap. The main thing to keep in mind with this one is that it's got almost like a ch to it. Like it's almost like it has a snare layered underneath it, the way it's so like... Yeah, just punchy like that. So you want to make sure that you get a sound that isn't just like a but actually has the ch to it as well. And you can see I just have some drum bus on that. There's without it. And then with it, it's just making the clap fatter. And yeah, then we have our main percussion, which is down here. You can see that it's just a bunch of different like rim shots and little hi-hat sounds and stuff like that. There's also this little operator percussion here, which I'll show you. So you can see that's just kind of like constantly moving and changing. It's very similar actually to the noise hi-hat that I showed you where we have some white noise going into a bandpass filter. The bandpass here has an envelope on it. And then there's a bit of automation as well, but we can just turn on this LFO here. And yeah, it's like, it's a really subtle background layer, but you know, just having like... Something a bit more lively there. We have like this hi-hat. Which is just kind of a constant like... Tick, 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 in the background, but it's a bit quiet. And yeah, so these are really just kind of like... About making sure that you have enough stuff there. Like you can see, even on the group, we don't even have any processing. It's super dry. But it's just all these little background sounds that you need. Because if we turn these off. Yeah, like the groove is still kind of there. But it's not the same. And 
as having these. So these are going to be really important for the overall track and the groove. Even if they seem like they might just be background layers. And then after that, we have even more percussion with this bonus percussion. So if you notice, the last percussion was constantly going. Like, there's always something that you're hearing with this group that's playing right now. But with this bonus percussion group, you notice this stuff is a lot more spaced out. And it's a lot more about how this stuff is kind of like doing call and response with each other. Like, for example, with these first two ones, it's a very, like, kind of slow one where we get... It's like... And then a bar later, you get the... And then the call and response down here is with this bell and this reverse sound. Which, this is just this effect sound that I reversed. But you're getting like that... So that's kind of a cool thing. And yeah, it's just like, you know, these are going to add a lot of depth, even though they might seem even more of like background than that last group of percussion was. If I turn these off, there's just something missing that like, it just doesn't quite feel like it's on the right level yet. But then when we turn these on, You know, they just kind of tie the whole groove together and really make it feel like... Just a lot more funky. And on the groove of those, we just have some drum bus. So that's just fattening these up. Here's without it. And then with it. And yeah, so that is going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, presets. Everything like that from this video is available right at the top of the description on my Bandcamp. This is a really great way to support me. So definitely go check that out if you guys are enjoying the videos. And yeah, thank you so much, guys. And I will see you tomorrow with another video.